you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode of Locked On Razorbacks is brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Now, what I'm also loving is the fact that Arkansas plays tomorrow against UAPB and what will be a historic game as we've been talking about this week. And let's be honest, like I don't want to say that I'm being disrespectful of UAPB in any regard or any shape or any form, but Arkansas should win this game. They should win this game big. They should win this game going away. It shouldn't be close. We should see backups in, all of that. That should happen in this game. As you know from Razorback fandom, just because something should happen doesn't mean it always does. But that's what it should happen. And one of the things that I was looking at and just, you know, trying to give an idea of what to expect out of this game is that I want to see I want to see a hot start. 11 a.m. games suck. We all know they suck. The energy is tough to get going. I don't care if you're a college kid or not, and I know that's not an excuse or anything, but just being real about it, Getting up and getting around early in the mornings and then getting ready for a football game is not easy on anyone. It's always much more preferred from coaches, from players, from fans, from everybody, 6 o'clock games or at least 2.30, 3 o'clock games, somewhere in there. It's not easy because your energy is just not the same. You know, if you think about in a lot of cases, which I know coaches have had practices and whatnot at different times to try to help this fact, uh, you know, college kids especially, they you know, they get up – kind of relatively early and they, you know, they go to class or whatever, but practices usually aren't till the afternoon. Sometimes it may be a morning practice, but most of the time it's just till afternoon. So <clears throat> this is now a point in time though, where you've had four straight 11 a.m. games. So raise your backs. You should be used to this by now. You should be used to the fact that you have to wake up early to get ready for a football game. So I, what I want to see is I want to see you Go out there from the get-go, from the very beginning, and get it done. I'm talking defensively. I'm talking offensively. I'm talking about looking sharp, looking crisp, looking energized, because the crowd's going to be there. The energy's going to be there. It's up to you to bring it, and I want to see you bring it. I want to see you get out there and get after it and get early and you know, get have, really have some really methodical drives, have some good defensive stops, maybe cause a few turnovers. Come out pissed off that you've lost three straight, and you want to go five and three heading into the bye week. That's what I want to see as far as the start goes. I also want to see KJ Jefferson as little as possible. And it has nothing to do with his play because obviously you know how I feel about KJ. Great quarterback that has done a great job so far this year. But I want to see him not in the game as much because hopefully that means that Malik Hornsby can come in and you can really continue to work on his development as well. We know KJ's great. But KJ needs to stay healthy, especially with the final four-game stretch in SEC play. KJ needs to stay healthy. He needs to stay focused. He needs to stay physically and mentally strong. And I think that having him come into this game and then have him heading out of the game as quickly as possible is what's going to be the most ideal situation for him. So get him in and get him out. Have him run some plays. Don't have him to do too much. Don't have him run it too much on his own. You should be able to take care of business with the great running backs that you have and also the passing game. Get him out. I want to see Malik Hornsby get in more. I want to see him not only be able to do things with his legs, but also see what he can do with his arm. You know, that's not to say you should look at this game as a glorified practice, but hopefully once you get to the point to where you're taking care of business in a major way against UAPB and the game is completely and totally in your control, Start showing off a little bit. Start getting some real live game reps for Malik Hornsby. Let him do some things. Let him run around. Let him make some plays. See what we uh, have been hearing about for so long. I want to see him do that. I want to see him get involved a little bit more and show off that world-class speed as much as we've been hearing about. I also want to see the four running backs that Arkansas has. I want to see them utilized the entire game. And when I mean utilized, I mean focused. I mean 
really showcased. I want to see you, Kendall Bryles, establishing the run from the get-go, utilizing that run, and only passing when you have to pass or when you want to throw them off. Because your bread and butter in the first four games of this year of this year offensively was the fact that you had great running attacks. You had great games by the running backs and also with KJ Jefferson. And then on occasion, you'd hit them big with a deep pass or just throw it a pass when you needed to or whatnot. I want to see that you're out there getting all these running backs as much run as possible because you have a four-headed monster with running backs. Like there's not a running back on this roster that I'm like, oh, crap, he's in. Or, oh, crap, like I put the other guy in. Like, no, they're all great. Not only four great running backs, but an awesome quarterback, too, in KJ that can really tuck it and get something going there as well. So I want to see you do really good things with the running backs and really showcase that. Defensively, here's what I want to see. I want to see getting pressure on the quarterback. Cliche, I know. You want to get pressure on the quarterback in every game. I know. But I just feel like for the longest period of time, we have not seen that. Like Trey Williams, for instance, uh, you know, he had that he was one of the best defensive linemen by a lot of people's standards through the first four games, and he's just kind of been non existent now. Like, I don't like that. I don't want to see that anymore. I want to see him being involved a lot more. Uh, I want to see John Ridgeway plugging up those holes and really causing some problems in the backfield. I want to see Hayden Henry getting those tackles in the backfield, too. I, w- I just want to see pressure. I want to see. Guys getting after the quarterback, stuffing the running back. The thing that this team really did a good job of at the beginning of the year, I want to get back to it. Because, listen, the secondary is not perfect. They've had their struggles. And with Catalan being out, that's that's a big factor. Let's just be honest about it. Out for the year, not an ideal situation because we know how good he is. But it certainly seems like that there's been some things on defense that have been either figured out or not doing as well that needs to be shored up. So get pressure, because when you get pressure, the rest of the stuff is going to come hand in hand. Get some turnovers. Get get a lot of three and outs. Show your dominance against an inferior team. That's what I want to see, and I want to see it from the get-go. All this in the early going. I don't think that's too much to ask. Oh, also, I want to see special teams not be a nightmare. Let's Let's just hope for that as well. Is that too much to ask? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. But sometimes it is. I don't really know. But still, that's what I want to see. This episode of Locked On Razorbacks is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. It's been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can go to reconnect. It's a place where classmates can meet up for study groups, knowing they'll have a dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries, which, let's be honest, that's what we all love. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, and the home team or the away team, can go to recharge, and it's the place to always look forward to stopping on a long road trip to rest your legs and refuel. I'll tell you this, my favorite thing about McDonald's, and you know, a lot of people have childhood memories growing up there, which I do too, but here as an adult, after a late night, there's nothing better than going to McDonald's and getting just a large French fry and some McNuggets. Like, I mean, you top off the night. There's no better way than doing it that way. And going by McDonald's through the drive-thru because you know they're going to be hot. You know the fries are going to be crispy. And after your uh, night of shenanigans to end the night at home, sitting in your on your recliner just enjoying the great French fries and McNuggets, there's nothing better than that. I'm telling you. It's, see, I, I may have to go there right now just to get a little taste of it since I love it going so late at night. But anyways, that's just the way it is. So head to your local McDonald's and refuel and reconnect. Some might say Locked On Razorbacks watch party. Hey, listen, you know what it's all about. You know you need to go to McDonald's. And just in the way of Jim Gaffigan and how he does it, ba 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 I'm loving it. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, we know that... Uh, you know, basketball's starting to get going a little bit too. And we had a Curtis Wilkerson on yesterday to talk a little bit more about it and some of the expectations that are coming along with it as well. But, you know, I, I was thinking just in talking about obviously basketball season starting up and, you know, that the game and football games in Little Rock this weekend. And we know that Little Rock's going to have a basketball game. We know that Little Rock has had baseball games too. And, you know, and I, I wanted to set the record straight when I was hearing these things, because I still have people that tweeted me 
about uh, this particular topic, and apparently they either don't understand uh, what uh, what I'm meaning by it, or they just don't like want to care about it, or they just want to like hate, hate on me for something. But either way, my whole thought process behind this whole thing with uh, games and Little Rock and stuff is that I actually do enjoy more games. Like I, I like when baseball comes down to Dickie Stevens Park and plays a baseball game. Like that's cool. That's really cool. I like it when you have Razorback basketball come down to Little Rock to face, you know, you, whoever. I mean, it can be, obviously, it's going to be a non-conference opponent. But, you know, even if it's an in-state or out-of-state opponent, I really like that. I really think it's cool that they do that. And they come down to Simmons Bank Arena or the Stevens Center, where they're going to end up. But I like that. And a lot of you probably remember for a long time that, particularly in basketball, too, there were other times where games were held at different avenues or different venues uh, here in the state of Arkansas. Like one of the most famous games in basketball, Arkansas beating Michael Jordan, North Carolina. That was in Pine Bluff. Like imagine today where you're like with Bud Walton Arena and it's like, oh, you get to play the number one team. You get to play Duke this year. Oh, sweet. And you get him at, and, and get him at home. All oh, right. But you're playing him in Pine Bluff. What? No, like it wouldn't even happen, but it did that back then. So there was a time where you had games and events more frequently being played outside of Fayetteville and not only just in Little Rock, but in other places too. And over time, obviously, with the way that the, how much money home games make, it went by the wayside a little bit. Like suddenly, you didn't want to have any games, especially big games, away from your campus because you know how much money it provides not only for your university, but for the city of Fayetteville and all those things too. So it kind of puts the athletic department in kind of a bind because you have so many people that are wanting to uh, go out and, and wanting to have this uh, thing done in a certain particular way and, and really, you know, crow about it and all that. Like you want that people are coming out and seeing how, how badly they want these games. But at the same time, you as an athletic director or whatnot, you're like, we got to make money. <laughs> we don't want to lose out on millions of dollars at our home campus and university but we can't come out and say that because that's going to be a bad look for us if we say, yeah, well, that's nice and cute and wonderful, but we're about the money. That's what we care the most about. Like, you can't do it that way either. So, essentially, what you're having is that the university and Hunter Yurchek, they're trying to find compromises. They're trying to find ways to say, okay, well, we will throw you a bone. We will play games off campus and here in the state of Arkansas, but <clears throat> it cannot be a big game. It cannot be a Power 5 game. It cannot be a SEC game. It can't be any of that. You get this game. You know, okay, Little Rock, more Memorial Stadium, you get UAPB. You know, or, you know, Dickie Stevens Park or whatever, you get UAPB or Little Rock themselves or whoever. Like, hey, you get that. But we're keeping the home games and we're keeping the big games in Little Rock for all sports. And, folks, that's the way it should be. And that's where I want everybody to understand that I don't have a problem with that. Like, I do not have a problem with playing non-conference uh, group of five teams in Little Rock in any sport or anywhere else in the state. I have no problem with that. What I do have a problem with is that when you have an SEC game in Little Rock, that takes away not only money, but it takes away an ability to have on-campus visits, which are crucial to recruiting. It takes away a lot of the elements as far as part of the football atmosphere in the game itself. And so you can't have that. But if Arkansas insists on playing one non-conference game in Little Rock against, again, UAPB or whoever, I know they're playing Arkansas State there as well, then fine. That's fine with me. Have at it. Keep it that way. But when it comes to the big games, no. Those need to stay in Fayetteville. Arkansas does not need to be playing LSU in Little Rock anymore in football. Arkansas does not need to play Kentucky in basketball in Little Rock. Arkansas does not need to play Ole Miss in Little Rock in baseball. Like Those things just don't need to happen, and that's fine. You can still have your games. You can still be able to go, but you have to understand where the U of A is coming from too. And I think that there's a common ground where, hey, they're making it work. Because let's be honest, folks, could have easily just said, you know what? Screw you, Little Rock. We're having everything in Fayetteville, and you can just get over it. They could have done that, but at least they're not. Well, 
not yet at least. We're back and better than ever. New web interface for the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's right. You know I'm talking about betonline.ag, the number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated mobile or uh, desktop website to sign up today to receive 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, baseball postseason, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to their favorite casino games, don't take advantage. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So head over to betonline.ag where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, heading into the final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar of all time. If you haven't tried Built Bar by now, you are missing out. They say it's a protein bar, but it does not taste like one. You have to try out one of these amazing bars to believe it yourself. Most protein bars have this chalky, waxy, or just hard, plain hard to choke down. But Built Bar is a soft, covered in 100% real chocolate, and when you bite into it, you know you're eating something different. It's more of an experience, one that you'll enjoy. In fact, you're, you'd swear you're eating a candy bar. They just sent me the double fudge brownie chunk. They're incredible. They're low carb, low calorie, low fat, low sugar, and high in protein and have all the healthy benefits. And they come out to it with new flavors every single few or so days. So try, to, try it out. See what they like. See, or see what you like. See what they have to offer. Head over to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. So I, I, this isn't necessarily Razorback related, but it is relatable nonetheless, where Arkansas will be facing or Arkansas going up against LSU here in a few weeks. They'll be doing it then the final time that they'll ever face Ed Orgeron at LSU, which hopefully Arkansas wins because they never beat Ed Orgeron while he was the coach at LSU. So this will be their last opportunity. But yeah, Ed Orgeron's moving on after this season. And uh, I know that, the, of course, they've had some coaching gaffes in, in, in the past and LSU's always had some ongoing issues when it comes to off the field things and whatnot and you know what of course with the Will Wade situation and the Les Miles situation and also the Ed Orgeron situation like it's just been a kind of a nightmare for them when it comes to you know stuff off the court and off the field which I know no one's having any sympathy for but still it's something that's pretty crazy so you have all that and we know that there's other college jobs opened up and whatnot, and the LSU's trying to figure out who they're going to hire and, and all that. But here's my thing, and this is why I felt like I wanted to bring it up. LSU is one of the best college football jobs in the country. It, to me, it's in the top two or three because you literally have all the recruiting at, and you're just leaving the, you don't even have to leave the Baton Rouge area to be able to put together a top 25 football team. I mean, they, they have recruiting insane. In the state of Louisiana, you're the biggest school far and away, not close. You have had high-level success. You have, uh, obviously, a great fan base and a lot of fans that go out there. Like, you have it all. But for some reason, LSU, like, they, I think they kind of had struck lightning in a bottle with Nick Saban. But, like, Les Miles. Les Miles won a national championship. Yes, he did. Les Miles had some good seasons. But Les Miles, if you think about it, he underachieved at LSU. Some of those LSU teams should have won championships that they didn't. Like there were times they had for sure a better team than what they showed, but they just never, they only won one title. They should have won more. Same thing with that Orgeron. Like, yeah, he won the one national title and that was the, but it was like lightning in a bottle where all the stars aligned. But since then it's been a nightmare. Like you're two years removed from a championship and you're out the door. Now, granted, again, I know it has more to do with off the field stuff and all that too, but still it just doesn't make any sense to me. LSU, Miami, USC, Three places that either are that do have coaching openings or will have coaches openings. Those schools should never be bad at football. They should never be less than seven, eight wins a year, ever. In fact, more often than not, they should at least have double-digit wins. Those schools should. But due to poor coaches, hires, due to poor culture, due to poor whatever, they've been unable to really recapture some of the excitement and Stuff that they've had previously, especially in the case of USC and Miami. Hiring coaches is so hard. It is. Even when you're a big-time school, hiring the right coaches is tough. Like, look at not only the jobs that have been going through, but like Miami might be the prime example, and USC might be a prime example of that. But think about Texas. 
what they've had to go through and how tough it's been. You know, think about, uh, you know, teams of old that used to be uh, really historic but aren't anymore, like Nebraska. You know, they used to be really good, but they're not even on the same wavelength that they once were. Tennessee, kind of the same thing. Florida has Dan Mullen. He did a good job last year, but I you know, think certainly things seems things weird down there. But my point is this. Hiring coaches is tough. And when you find a right coach that's successful, even though there may be some frustrations year in and year out, you got to be you got to know and understand when the person's the right man for the job. I think Sam Pittman is. And you know, he's got a lot of work to do and he's got a long way to go, but I think he is. But I don't think you need to fire him or change, make changes just because of, you know, one year or one, you know, one off year or something like that. Like you got to be able just to know, is this the right guy? Is this the guy that's going to fit us? Is this the guy that's going to bring us some things? Because you can't be Nick Saban. You can't be a national championship team every single year. You just can't do it. It's impossible. But when you find the right guy, stick with him. And in the case of like LSU and Miami and all them, you should find the right guy. There should be great coaches begging to come take your job. Don't think, overthink it. Hire the right person for the job. It's tough, but you can do it. You can make it work, and you can get back to your glory days. I don't think that's too much to ask. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast today. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. Also get after me on Twitter at Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. 